Hey YouTubers, I'm uh, back at long last with, um, I guess we would call this my Your Questions Answered video. Um, a couple of videos ago I did a random photo notes and said uh, would you folks mind sending in some questions? Sorry, I keep shifting. I'm trying to get my chair in the right place. Uh, I asked for um, just questions that people might have of me, maybe not entire video subjects, but just um, ask me questions and uh, and I'll answer. And uh, I thank you guys because I got quite a few and I've got them listed over here on my other monitor. That's why I'm looking that direction. Uh, so I'm just going to go through them and I haven't practiced my answers so you know, we'll kind of see what happens here okay first questions any books or prints photographers etc that you particularly like and uh, for me I, uh, I have to admit even though I love photography I'm not really deep in photographer lore meaning I don't know all that much about all the photographers that are out there, especially modern photographers, um, I just don't keep up with that that much. I enjoy taking photos myself and looking at my photos and looking at my friends' photos. Uh, all that being said, though, um, it might be a bit trite at the moment. Uh, there's the gal uh, whose book is out right now. A guy found all of her negatives. Her last name is Meyer. I can't remember her first name right now. Anyway, uh, I bought that book because I thought those were fabulous photos. And uh, there's a real interesting story behind it. And it's worth a look. Let me just look up what her name was. I can't believe I can't remember that. Vivian. Vivian Meyer. Uh, that's one book I've bought. I have a book by Eggleston. Um, I've got a couple of Rangefinder Forum um, books that are collections of uh, you know members of the forums photos uh, I like Henri Cartier Bresson who doesn't um, I like Gary Winogrand a lot what I've seen I do own one print I can't even remember the guy that shot it I think he's semi-famous uh, it's a artist proof and maybe I'll show you that print in another video sometime it's a nice desert shot. It's a landscape shot. Uh, I like, uh, you know, again, it might be trite, but I like Ansel Adams a lot. And, you know, I uh, will never equal what he did in my own photos, but I do have that sort of thing in mind when I shoot landscape. Um, I also like, no, I can't think of the guy's name. Oh, my God. I've got a couple of his books. Oh, Richard, Richard Mizrak. I like him a lot. Well, he's got a book called Desert Cantos. And it is just full of photos of um, the remainders of nuclear test sites and uh, evacuated cities and that sort of thing uh, in the desert. And uh, the shots are just really cool. I think he shot them with a view camera. And they're in color, but they've got these really interesting muted tones. And uh, I like that book a lot. So moving on from that, um, newbie photo tips. Well, that's a topic for a whole series of videos. Uh, but I'm trying to just answer this as a question. Uh, it'll sound crazy coming from me, the gearhead, but I would say my number one newbie photo tip would be to try not to concentrate so much on the gear and concentrate more on taking photos. And again, it sounds stupid coming from me because believe me, I've had all of the stuff. As I look back, that's kind of what I see is what really mattered is the photos and um, Later in my career, that is more recently, um, you know, I've, I've shot for a long, long, long time. Uh, but in the last few years, I've been perfectly fine shooting a fixed lens camera. And so you learn to work within constraints. And so I think constraints are a good thing when you're starting out. And they're actually a good thing as you proceed. I could go on and on about that. That is actually a, a good subject for a kind of a philosophical video. Uh, constraints and art and, and I've experienced this both in uh, visual arts like painting and uh, photography and music music production uh, it goes in all of them constraints uh, can actually uh, serve a valuable purpose in uh, your creativity so sorry I got an itchy lip uh, anyway that would be my newbie photo tip. Concentrate on the photographs, um, not so much on the gear. 
and then after you've done it for a while you can be a total gear hound like me so uh moving over to music i think this came up because uh, i mentioned that i was going through some old tapes and, and digitizing them and i'm mostly well i'm probably halfway done with that so the questions were best music based memory and could i cover some music made with my bands and um so best music based memory i would have to say is really playing with just about any band uh, and I, I don't have tons of experience with it but i have you know gotten together with folks and jammed over the years the the guys i played with a lot in college those are some of my best memories period uh partially because we were just buds and so we had a good time hanging around together but there's also uh when you're playing in an electronic you know or electric band where you've got amplification uh there is nothing like hitting a bass note i play bass in this band hitting a bass note and hearing your drummer's uh drum set respond to that like the uh the strainers on the snare rattling and the feel you feel it you know you got a big fat speaker behind you you actually feel the music there is nothing like that you could go to a concert and that's similar but if you can play a musical instrument playing with a group even if you suck there's just no comparison to the way that feels so uh that could probably be a whole nother video as well i mean i played with a lot of different guys and nothing serious it's just i've played a lot of different styles with a lot of different people uh, on different instruments and uh, it's always fun to jam i'm toying with the idea right now of kind of mixing in uh, some of the recorded stuff that i've got and so if i actually decide to follow through on that you'll be hearing it in the background right now so again i may just do a whole video on that if people would find that interesting as opposed to really boring i could go on and on about me man first camera bought with my own money i got into photography in the 70s and i think i was around 13 years old 13 14 12 something like that and who knows what got me started i'm a geek about anything mechanical electromechanical or electronic have been always since I was a kid so I um, somehow got turned on to the idea of taking photographs we had in the household a uh, Polaroid swinger that's a white plastic uh, camera I don't think they make the um, the pack film for it anymore I don't even remember if it was pack film it had been roll uh, you could find that out somewhere else anyway it's a white plastic uh, fixed focus I think camera and uh, you know we shot that carried that all over and, and I liked playing with that I do happen to because I was I've told you guys how I was going through this closet behind me uh, I do happen to have dug out a couple of cameras that I did use while I was starting to get interested in photography this is a Kodak Brownie that was just in the family I put film through this in the 70s and it's a much older camera than that it's fixed focus plastic lens I mean there's a billion of these things around and I also shot this uh, Kodak tourist which is a pretty cool camera it's a folder I think it takes 127 film can't remember for sure I'm pretty sure that's it it's kind of like uh, 120 film but the spools are slightly different size you can still shoot this today if you re-spool some film it's got a what's it got yeah, it's not the world's fastest lens. It's got a, a f12.5 lens on it, and it uh, doesn't even say what the focal length is. I'm guessing it's around a 90, um, just based on the film size. Size. It's a, essentially a six by nine camera. I've had my thoughts about uh, loading some film in the sky and shooting it. it. You know, it can produce pretty interesting results actually. So I shot this a decent amount when I was a kid. And then I uh, just, I had to have an SLR. Man, I just had to. So I um, took paper route and uh, lawn mowing money. Uh, sounds like something from the 50s. But anyway, uh, I took paper route money and, and just odd job type money and uh, saved up 
and uh, was able around Christmas time, probably 1975 maybe, uh, to afford to mail order a camera from one of the photography magazines. I think it was 52nd Street Photo and bought an SLR and that was a Miranda Sensor X. Miranda isn't in business anymore. The camera was actually pretty good. It certainly wasn't a first tier camera, but it had a lot of interesting features. I think they just had some, maybe some marketing issues. Anyway, the, the camera had, it had an interchangeable prism and viewfinders and uh, built-in meter and uh, interchangeable lenses, obviously. All I could afford was the basic kit, the camera with the f1.7 lens or 1.8. And I took a lot of shots with it, but honestly, I was so damn poor. Uh, you know, I couldn't really afford that much film and, and development. So, you know, I took quite a bit, but not as much as I thought I would. Somebody asked me about my early photography, and I'll just include photos along the way here. Favorite photo I've seen? Well, that is hard. I probably would be... I don't have a favorite. I'll tell you photographs that I like. Uh, the Winogrand shot of the guy with the big bandage on his nose driving by in a car and, and looking right into Winogrand's camera. I like that photo a lot. Um, there's a photo taken by uh, Bresson. It's a, I think it's a prostitute leaning out of a window. I like that shot a lot. I, I like a bunch of Ansel Adams shots. Uh, but I don't have any favorite favorite, to be honest. Favorite photo I've shot? That's impossible. Uh, what I'm going to do eventually is a video on the, the photos that I have framed. And that'll give you a feel for which of my shots I like. And uh, the, the shots that I'll put up um, from my past when I started shooting, uh, that'll give you a feel for kind of the, the types of photographs that I tend to like may not be the kind that I shoot a lot, but that's the kind I tend to like. Film reviews. That also could probably be an entire uh, video, but I'll just tell you that I am not honestly that picky. I do tend to shoot a variety of films. I'll just give you my impressions. Efki, I like a lot. It has an old school look and you can get really slow speeds. And uh, when developed and scanned right, it looks really, really beautiful. And I think they don't make it anymore. I'm not certain, but I suspect that I'm right on that. Uh, I'll talk about black and white for a second. I shoot a lot of Tri-X. It's just like the standard. It's like a default, you know. And um, so I, I stick with it for probably the majority of my shooting, if I uh, don't mind shooting a faster film. I liked Plus X and I miss it a whole lot and I'm really sorry it's not made in 120 and I think they've dropped 135 now too so that's too bad. Uh, I have one roll of 120 left of that and I don't know what to do with it because there will be so much pressure on me to use that that film uh, properly you know in quotes and to get the most out of it uh, I can't even load it you know it just sits in my uh, freezer. I like Acros a lot that's a modern film. I like it a whole lot. I, pretty much all the results I've gotten from it I like a lot. There are people that don't like the modern tabular um, tabular grain films, but I don't care that much. To me it's just I guess I can find something good about everything I shoot. And I basically shoot the different films just to see what they look like and um, because I need different film speeds. Uh, that being said, uh, Rolle Retro uh, 80S is phenomenal, very difficult to shoot, it's super contrasty, uh, but if you can shoot it on a cloudy day or you can control your lighting, it's just amazing. I really like that stuff, um, it's, but it's, it's challenging. Uh, in color, I'll just contrast my, t I basically shoot Portra and Ektar, and my findings are that I for whatever reason prefer portrait in medium format and ektar in 35 millimeter can't really support that it's just the way it's turned out i think maybe it's because it sort of livens up the small frame to shoot ektar because it's uh fairly vivid you know it's closer to like a slide film response than uh negative film 
and Portra um, just you know it has great qualities uh, in medium format good skin tones all the stuff that you hear it's why it's called Portra because it's good for portraits but it's it's so neutral it's good for just about anything um, I like both I have taken some portraits with Ektar where the 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 people their skin looked pretty red and I I'm, I'm not that sensitive to colors but I uh, if it looks if their skin looks red to me I'm sure that other people will kind of go oh my god that looks horrible to me it's just like eh, your skin's a little red so that's just kind of a quick overview of the the emulsions I shoot and, and again I don't really care that much I just it's like when I take a camera I just work within the constraints of whatever it is I'm shooting um, do I own any vinyl so we're back to the music stuff so I've bought gobs of vinyl because I'm that old uh, I probably still have 150 or so albums of my own and my wife probably has about a hundred I haven't added anything to the collection I am tempted from time to time to buy some expensive fancy pressings and you know just enjoy those I still enjoy the sound of vinyl I still play it on occasion uh, for example I have a Pat Metheny this gets into the next question I have a Pat Metheny uh, album reunion that I love I love it to death. I've got it on vinyl. I've got it on CD. I listen to the vinyl. Um, I've got some Ralph Towner stuff that uh, I think I have in CD and vinyl, and I listen to it on the vinyl. And I'm actually toying. Let's just talk about analog for a second. I'm actually toying because I'm insane uh, with getting a reel-to-reel -reel deck just because I've never had one, always kind of wanted one, and... Uh, I want to play around with recording vinyl on it and maybe buying old pre-recorded tape and, and that sort of stuff and enjoying analog in that way. Uh, the next question related to this is do you prefer jazz? The same person asked both of these. Do you own any vinyl and do you prefer jazz? Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say I prefer it. I like it a lot and um, my musical taste is relatively broad. Um, I don't like everything. Like I don't listen to country, country, but I really love roots music that um, kind of has stemmed from bluegrassy sounds and that sort of thing. So, for example, I love Gillian Welch. Absolutely, just love that style of music, um, acoustic, uh, bluegrass tinged, country folk. I like it. I'm not really well versed in it, but I like that kind of stuff. Like I like Wilco and that sort of thing. Um, I'll get to the jazz eventually. And then, you know, in uh, sort of more um, pop music, um, I'm a huge, 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 huge Radiohead fan. Have been for a very long time. Uh, I like Pinback, and I'm trying to think other. I'm a big Sonic Youth fan. Total Elvis Costello freak, at least, you know, from the old days. I know every word to pretty much every song he wrote. Uh, up to probably around 1985 or so. Um, you know, I was big into New Wave and Alternative and all that stuff. So uh, I got all kinds of, you know, corners in my music collection, um, little odd corners of uh, musical genres. Now into jazz, I, uh, I'm, I like jazz a lot. I'm relatively... Uh, I guess you would call it limited in my exposure, but I go deep in a few areas. So um, I like Pat Metheny a lot, and I've listened to him for a really long time. So folks that are like Pat Metheny, I will listen to, uh, but he's he's fairly unique. I'm blathering. Um, like Wynton Marsalis, but, you know, he, he does standards. So, you know... I like his playing, but it's I must just like the tunes, you know, that he picks and the way his band plays them. Um, they're not playing any or anything much original. So, you know, if you like Wynton Marsalis, you, you might like uh, any number of other musicians because they're playing a lot of the standards. I like ECM style jazz in general. That's a label, if you don't know that already, and that label has a very particular um, their a and person picks very particular types of artists their recordings are done a very particular kind of way so Pat Metheny started with ECM I'm pretty sure he switched labels though um, 
Ralph Towner was on ECM. Eddie Gomez is on ECM. Almost anything with an ECM label on it, I will listen to it. I especially like the way they record drums. There's just something about the way ECM uh, recordings were done, at least in the old days, that I really like. So I got a bunch of that kind of stuff in my uh, catalog. I like Alan Holdsworth a lot, as you may have noticed from the last contest. He's one of my very favorite guitarists. And uh, again, I, I haven't bought anything new of his, but I've got five or six albums from his older days and listened to those quite a bit. So that was really long-winded. I could also spend a long time on just my musical tastes and, and what's in my collection. Maybe I'll do that sometime and I'll show you my my setup. I've, I've got a really nice um, stereo setup, which is funny because I... Uh, I wished for the kind of stuff that I have now for a long, long time, uh, and now that I have it, I never, either I never make time to listen to it, or I will make some time to listen to it and I fall asleep, and it's just uh, ironic how things work out as you get older. <laughs> all right, geez, um, this has been all over the place. So thanks for asking these questions if these questions cause you to want to ask other questions feel free just ask in the comments and uh, maybe I'll do a, another one of these uh, sessions so uh, thanks for sticking with me if you stuck with me this long and thanks for your subscriptions thanks for watching thanks for all that stuff and stay tuned for more see ya